from the North Devon coast to the Atlantic shores, from the tropical rainforests to the sunny Azores, from Icelandic wastelands to Australian deserts. This is Cauldron FM, where the magic really happens. Enter Merlin, but beware, do not interrupt his magic. This post is taken from a broadcast by Reverend D. Edwards, and as soon as I saw it I knew it was something that I had to share, and so I've taken the time out to do this special broadcast, just so that uh, it gets this point across and clears something up. We are talking about demystifying paganism. Cauldron FM, where magic, new age and pop cultures meet. There is a huge misconception about uh, paganism, and I really feel this needs to be addressed. Pagan is a controversial subject, but it is normally only controversial when people don't know much about it. To begin with, paganism is very much misunderstood, and therefore it becomes controversial. There is a lot of mystery surrounding it, and I would like to take this time to go some way to removing that mystery. So what is paganism? Is it devil worship? Is it people going around casting spells on their enemies? Is it people in black robes who harm animals and mutilate cattle? If people believe any of that stuff, then immediately three things spring to mind and become patently obvious. Number one, they have never made it their business to study paganism. Number two, they don't really know any pagans personally. And number three, they watch far too much television. So here I'm going to try and clear up any misconceptions that are commonly found outside of paganism. In order to explain what paganism is, it is necessary to explain a few things that paganism is not. Hopefully this will dispel the rumours that are currently in existence. Firstly, paganism is not devil worship. True pagans will not believe in the devil, nor that it exists. The devil is a Judeo-Christian concept, and since pagans do not accept the theology of the Judeo-Christian beliefs, they won't really worship one of their gods, will they? Or (laughs) a Judeo-Christian devil, should I say that? They simply just don't accept the project, the concept. In other words, to worship something that you don't believe in is totally pointless. Secondly, pagans don't make blood sacrifices. They do not harm animals. To harm an animal would be a huge betrayal of their belief. Rather like a Christian burning a Bible, it just wouldn't happen. It is probably that people who spread this misconception have forgotten that Jehovah required blood sacrifices. Thirdly, pagans do not go out looking for people to harm or hurt. Most pagans have the same rule as Christian people. Treat others the way that you would like to be treated. Most pagans have the same creed also. If it harms nobody... Do what you will. The wording may be different, but the same concept is held by all pagan traditions. Most of the rumours that about pagans rely on these three misconceptions. Paganism is an extremely broad term encompassing many different religions and spiritual traditions that actually outnumber every denomination in every mainstream religion globally. When they hear the term pagan, a lot of people automatically think Wiccan. This is covered under the term of paganism, however to say that pagan means Wicca is like saying that Christianity means you are a Baptist, and that is an insult to each belief and is totally untrue. Pagans are actually mainly polytheistic, although not all of them. They believe in or worship more than one god or goddess. However, this does not apply to all pagans. 
for there are those who really only believe in and worship one God. Mormonism, however, could be considered to be a pagan religion, because it is a polytheistic religion. Mormons believe in multiple deities, but they only worship one God. And yet there are Mormons who will badmouth pagans because they have not taken the time to make the comparison. If they did compare, they would be surprised at just how much the two beliefs actually have in common. They are more like pagans than any other denomination of Christianity. A cautionary note here though, some pagans might want to take note of this as well. Generally though, the one god pagans believe that all the gods from every time, every religion and every culture are the same god or the same goddess, a universal divine. Some people consider that pagans come from one type of background and again this is totally untrue. Pagans come from everywhere, from every background imaginable, every financial class, educational level of society. They are everywhere you look. Most people never recognize pagans because they are looking for a stereotype, something that they have been taught to believe in by the movie or TV industries. People have been taught to believe that pagans wear all black clothing and hooded robes and go around chanting incantations. I'll ask you this though, doesn't this sound rather similar to Catholic priests or Buddhist monks? Some pagans do wear black, but then so do a lot of other people. But most of the time people don't notice the pagans around them because they are dressed like policemen, firemen, soldiers, doctors, lawyers, dentists. They cook our food, they give us our medicines, they dress our wounds, babysit our children, they protect us while we are asleep. Some people have known pagans for years and yet never knew it. Pagans do not force their beliefs on other people. One of the most basic traits of paganism is that pagans do not attempt to convert others to their belief system. Amongst pagans it is a generally held belief that every person's path will come to them and that nobody has the right to tell someone who they are or what they should believe. Pagans often practice what they don't preach. When asked a pagan will be honest and usually thrilled that somebody is bothered to ask about it because it shows that the person asking the questions has not been filled with propaganda, with stigma or stereotypes that they have been fed by almost every church in the world. When you say that you have had enough, most pagans will stop. They'll cease talking about their beliefs because they will respect your wishes. Most pagans carry out what was said about keeping one's own counsel better than do most Christians. If someone doesn't want to hear, they will walk away. They don't force the issue. It is a fact that in the Bible it said, And whosoever should not receive or hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. And that was in Matthew chapter 10 verse 14. Now let's take a short break for some messages. Mystical. Magical. Merlin. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing, but uh, I've just been doing a run through on this, and uh, where I <laughs> where I came to say pagan, I said penguin. <laughs> so um, I hope you'll forgive me, but uh, that just proves that we we are live, or well, we're real anyway. So anyway, to back to the back to the demystifying paganism. If you try to force someone into your beliefs or force them to accept what you are saying, that's classed as persecution. It is a mental persecution, just as much as slapping someone's face is a physical persecution. Most people who condemn pagans do not realize just how much they actually have in common, how much common ground the two beliefs actually hold, for example. Every time a Christian celebrates a pagan holiday, Christmas is celebrated on the 25th of December. But this wasn't the birthday of the person Jesus. He was actually born in or around August or September time. Nobody really knows the exact date, but anyone who has actually studied the subject will know that he wasn't born in December. So why celebrate in December? Well, the truth is a Roman emperor declared that the 25th of December would be a celebration which was to help integrate the followers of Mithra into Christianity. Mithra was an ancient pagan religion that preceded Christianity by some 600 years and the 25th of December 
was already a holiday for the people that celebrated Mithra. The interesting thought here is that Mithra was a pagan deity whose birthday was the 25th of December. Now, he also had 12 disciples. He was born of a virgin. He was sacrificed to redeem mankind, and before he died, he held a last supper with his disciples. And that last supper consisted of bread and wine. And at the end of his life, he said that he would return again to redeem mankind. So therefore, how can Christians pass judgment on pagans, saying that they worship the devil? Christians have more in common with pagans than they could ever know. Whenever they decorate a Christmas tree, whenever they sit their children on Santa's lap, whenever they hunt for Easter eggs or send a Valentine's card, they become practitioners of paganism. If they were confronted with this insight, most Christians would reply that it's all in the meaning, that the meaning is what is important. For example, they may say that the star on the top of a Christmas tree represents the star of Bethlehem. However, if this statement that it is all in the meaning is true, and the Christians say that they are not worshipping the devil, then by what right can they tell pagans that they are worshipping the devil? That sort of comment is hypocrisy at its very best. A Christian may also resort to discussions about rituals and spells that pagans perform. A ritual is nothing more than a performance of a visual prayer. It gives the practitioner something to focus on, a focal point for the energy that is released in that prayer. A spell is simply another way to pray to the divine, as in Islam where they bow seven times a day. It is also the same as burning incense in a church. A strange parallel there, isn't there? There are the rituals of performing baptisms, christenings, communions or marriage. They are all strictly symbolic and mean nothing without intent. Research has indicated that pagans who do not fit the stereotypical image of paganism tend to grow out of it by the time they reach puberty. Paganism is a way of life more than it is a religion. It is possible to follow any number of religions and still be a pagan. There are in fact pagan Christians. They practice paganism using Christian style names for their deities. There is such a thing as a Christian Wicca where God and Goddess terminology is replaced, replaced by Father, Holy Spirit and Son. Pagans can be, can be guilty of the same things as Christians. They will scream persecution, but will ignore a Christian just because of religion. If that is you, then how are you any different from the others? Pagans should become more responsible for creating awareness of their beliefs. They cannot expect people to understand if they are not told about it. This doesn't mean standing on a soapbox on street corners preaching paganism to all and sundry. But it does mean that if you wear a pentacle, be proud. Don't hide it away under your shirt, blouse or jumper. People will often ask you what it means. And don't be afraid to explain. Shed light and dispel darkness and myth. The moral of this whole piece on demystifying paganism and Christianity is to stop believing everything that you are shown on TV, in films, in the papers. Take the time to investigate for yourself. Learning will bring knowledge which will create understanding, and once you understand something, it will bring unity and peace. Blessed be. And this has been a Moonshadow Media production. Take care. Speak to you soon.